Hey guys, uh, two years ago something very, very special happened uh, and it was in the shadow of the lockdown, the COVID-19 pandemic that swept the globe um, and it was all thanks to Ben Pomfret who was uh, the, the brains behind NHS Fest, a wonderful charity that raised over £200,000 for Britain's National Health Service uh, to help him secure loads of PPE uh, and just do good in the world. Now, Ben reached out to loads of key practitioners in the music industry, uh, whether they be amplifier manufacturers like Ashdown or, you know, uh, music governing bodies or businesses and everything, basically. And they said, uh, look, we're going to do this charity, loads of fundraising stuff, Let's do some good in the world. Uh, Mark and Dan Gooday reached out to me and said, hey, we've got an idea. Whenever they say that to me, I'm suspicious because it normally means I have to do a lot of work. Um, <laughs> no, it's good. I mean, they work just as hard as me, if not harder. Um, but um, yeah, Mark reached out and he said, Look, let's, why, why don't you go online and do a whole weekend of bass lessons? Teamed up with Dan, made it happen, did all the promo, stuff like that. And everybody logged on and they, was a, they watched the lessons for free. And then there was a donate button or a, a link to take you over to NHS Fest. Um, and we, we, we did some good, man. It was really great. I was very proud. Um, there, I remember watching like the, you know, the, the streaming figures going up. I couldn't believe the amount of people that were tuning in. Um, but what it did is it acted as a, catal uh, a catalyst for me to then go, you know what, I, I really should contemplate doing this on my own um i've always done the web broadcasting stuff i did it with bass player magazine i wrote for bass player magazine for five years and i used to have to do little video lessons for their their sort of the ipad editions um then i'd done a load of um uh, online auditions and stuff for bass uh the bass institute in london uh, so i was kind of used to that and I'd, I'd i'd done an awful lot of recording for scott's bass lessons um scotty divine had really helped me sort of hone those skills of sitting in front of a camera because it's really weird guys i mean normally if you're teaching one-to-one -one, there's interaction right now i'm sitting in a room on my own talking to a sony lens okay right no, it's good my friends guys my friends um right, so it's good now um but that that i after that weekend uh i thought you know what i'm gonna put together with bass in mind there's a place to check out my cv check out all my bases from overwater this is the film man signature series. it's actually the prototype a lot of people don't see this base but this is the bit this is the one that we made uh when we were designing the main base um it's a place where you can pick up my books here is the shameless plug caught on concept series it's growing by the minute the second one just came out the third one's out in a couple of months the fourth one is out um after i get some sleep um and, and you know you can check out what i've done who i've worked with you can book some lessons you can look at my articles um and you can now start looking at some of these video lessons that I've started doing. Um, with Bass in Mind has become something awesome. And, I, and I'm really grateful for everybody that sort of logged in over that weekend. Uh, supported the charity, but also then gave me the inspiration to push on with my own career. Uh, uh, so, yeah, thanks to everybody that's been involved for the last two years since. And that's the reason why I wanted to revisit this information. Um, originally... Uh, it was a bit messy. It wasn't well recorded. It's still not great. I know that. Uh, but you know what? It's the best I can do right now and I'm happy with it. So it's all good. Now, um, in the final lesson of this series, we talked about something which is quite closely associated to me, which is permutations. Um, permutations, this lesson actually really annoyed me because it was during the afternoon in the UK. So it was obviously prime time internet streaming. Everybody was on Netflix. And um, as a result, the lessons just kept crashing. Uh, the final two lessons of the series were a car crash. They were terrible. That was the reason why I wanted to re-record them and get them out again. Um, but this lesson worked on permutations. Now, a permutation is when you look at something, you go, how many other ways can I deliver that? without changing the information. Okay. In when we did triads, which was, I think, lesson six, five, one of those back there. Just look at the titles, okay? Um, I talked about being able to play a triad. Root, third, fifth, root, fifth, third, third, root, fifth, third, fifth, root, fifth, third, root, fifth, root, third. There's six ways of playing a triad in root position. Um, now, if you master all of those, what happens is you have a different perspective of the same vocabulary. 
Which means when you're writing bass lines, you might go, actually, you change your line knowing that the information is correct. It's going to be really supportive. It's going to do its job. It's still the best notes that you could choose. Um, but you can get a little bit of variation. You can grow your vocabulary. Um, well, uh, I did that in the, the chord tone books. I did it on a couple of lessons on SBL once. And I've kind of refined the process quite a lot since then. And in the last lesson of this course, what I spoke about was applying that approach to all arpeggios and all of their inversions. Right, now, this is a huge subject. Now, to give you an idea how big a subject this is, um, I wrote one book, which was nearly 200 pages, a second book, which is 100 pages, um, and I've only just done the introduction. There's a third, of, it's taken me four books, excess of 400 pages, to basically notate all this stuff so that you can learn from it because there's not many books on this uh, that are kind of orientated towards the bass they haven't got with bass in mind ah see what i did there um right now so the permutation thing's a big deal but it's a massive massive study area so all i wanted to do in this lesson was give you a little taster and something for you to think about and go that's actually pretty cool now what we're going to do is the following we're going to take an arpeggio and we're going to examine how we play it. There's my four notes. Then we're going to play that arpeggio in first inversion, second inversion, and third inversion. Okay. That seems like it's okay so far. For the guys that don't know their inversions, it's all right. I'm going to visit that information in a bit. But then I'm going to give you a way of playing it, which is going to turn it completely upside down. And once you understand the methodology, I'm then going to open the doors to what you can do with this stuff. And when I do that, it is a scarily huge way of delivering information. Four notes, guys, four notes can be delivered. If I remember correctly, I'm sweating now, but I think it's 1,152 different ways. Now, <laughs> think about that. And think about how much you can achieve with just four notes. But most importantly, how much are you currently not doing with those four notes? There's obviously something we need to think about here. Okay, right. Um, I want to start with a relatively basic arpeggio. Everyone can play, not sweat too much over, and they can get it under their fingers. So we're going to play a G minor 7 arpeggio. First note is G. Pop. There's a G. Pop. Don't get necessary. Sorry. Um, there's a G. B flat is our third. The fifth is D. And the flat seven is an F. G, B flat, D, F. That is a G minor seven arpeggio. Make sure you can play that. Make sure you know where that is. Keep doing this and you annoy everybody in your household and your neighbours. Okay? But practice it for three hours. Okay, right now. Um, there's your four notes. Right now. How you've just delivered those notes is root, third, fifth, seven. Now, without changing any of the notes, there's actually 24 ways I can play those notes. I can go root, third, fifth, seven, root, third, seven, five. Root fifth seven three root fifth third seven root seven fifth three root seven third fifth. They're all different permutations. There's twelve of them. Six off the root, six off the third, six off the fifth, six off the seventh. Now, if I then take that arpeggio, I can move it into first inversion. Right, go back to your arpeggio. Root flat three five seven. Okay. Now, an inversion is when you take the lowest note and redeploy it an octave higher. So that G was our first note. We're gonna play that here, an octave higher. Play the rest of the notes as they were. So root position, root, flat three, five, seven. First inversion is flat three, five, seven, and then the root on top. Root position, first inversion. But guess what? Because we've changed the note, that root has been redeployed. We've now got another 24 permutations because we can go 
1357 1375 1537 1573 1753 1735 with the root in first inversion we now have 48 <laughs> variants so root first okay guys now the next thing i want to do is i want you to to make sure you know where second inversion is now second inversion you take first inversion okay which was already root position triad take the lowest note redeploy an octave higher that's now first inversion now in first inversion you take the lowest note and redeploy that an octave higher so it starts on the fifth then the seventh the root an octave higher and then the third i'm playing that b flat at fret three on string one so we've got root position, first inversion, and then second inversion. Yeah, nice. Okay. Yeah, but the third is now an octave higher as well, which means root, third, fifth, seven, root, third, seven, five, root, seven, fifth, third, root, seven, third, fifth, root... There's another 24 permutations. Oh, wow. We're not done yet, though. We've done root position. We've done first inversion. We've done second inversion. And there's 24 permutations from each of those. Bugger. Okay, right. Now, um, what do we do now? Well, now um, we're going to play third inversion. Start on the 7, which is an F. Go F to G, B flat, and then a high D. That's the, the fifth up an octave. 7, 1, 3, 5. Root position, root 3rd, 5th, 7. First inversion, 3, 5, 7, 1. Second inversion, 5, 7, 1, 3. Third inversion, 7, 1, 3, 5. Okay, right. So that's a minor 7 arpeggio in all of its inversions. Okay, that's pretty cool. I can do that. And some of you guys may have already done that. It's very common that people, there's a major 7. Here's a minor 7. Here's a dominant 7. And I'm playing them in all of their different inversions, okay? Um, although people practice those... There are some other things you can do to do like my little dance. There are some other things you can do to make them a bit cooler and more challenging. Okay. There are 96 ways that you can play those four inversions, root position and three inversions. Put those for all 12 keys. That's how you get your 1,152 different variations. And you wonder why it took me four books to write this, okay? Um, now, uh, I want you to to take one permutation. One, three, five, seven. That's it, nothing else. Okay, root position, that's easy because that is root position. One, three, five, and seven. Job done, I'm happy with that. Okay, now when you play first inversion, you actually play three, five, seven, one. That's B flat, D, F, G. But I want you to play it one, three, five, seven. You're using the same permutation. So that starts on the G, then the B flat, then the D, then the F. So this is one, three, five, seven in root position. This is one, three, five, seven in first inversion. Oh, wow, that's cool. That's a different texture. Okay, now when you play second inversion, the notes are D, F, G and B flat. But you're playing fifth, seven, root, third. I want you to play three, five, <laughs> one, three, five, seven. So that would be the root, the three, the five, and the seven. Do you notice how now the notes have had to go lower to maintain the same permutation? Root, third, fifth, seven. Whew, okay, right, so root position, root, third, fifth, seven. First inversion, root third, fifth, seven. Second inversion, root third, fifth, seven. Guess what? 
third inversion. Now, when you play third inversion, you played F, G, B flat, D. But that was seven, one, three, five. I want you to play the same notes in the same register, but in the order of one, three, five, seven. Okay, so now, I can play a G minor seventh arpeggio in root position, first and second, first, second, and third inversion. But rather than just playing the notes in their registers, we're going to play them in the same order. That means G is will always be your first note, B flat will always be your second note, D will be your third note, and F will be your fourth note. Root, third, fifth, seven. Root, third, fifth, seven. Root, third, fifth, seven. Root, third, fifth, seven. That sounds great. It's another wonderful way of, you know, expanding your vocabulary so that rather than just playing the same old pentatonic stuff, you could start to get the notes of the arpeggio but delivered in an order that it's not very predictable but you, you know you have to study this stuff because you won't naturally play them um it's a huge huge study uh i did it with triads in this book this is an excavation of the humble triad the reason it's an excavation is, is that's a metaphor guys okay it's about getting in getting under the skin i took the four triads major, minor, diminished, and augmented. I played them in every single key, every single inversion, and every single permutation. That monster book is just three notes. Then I started doing it with minor and dominant chords, which we've kind of talked about a little bit today. And this is focusing on two fives. The next books do major harmony, minor harmony, but these rudiments that we're doing are actually they're not what the books are about the books are actually about voice leading but if you learn these rudiments voice leading becomes even more prolific so this is like the breadcrumbs leading up to the conclusion um i hope this lesson is giving you food for thought guys when you play an arpeggio in root first second and third inversion don't just play it in an ascending and descending manner why not consider their permutations? And if you want to know more about permutations, pop by with bass in mind and pick a couple of copies of my books. That'd be good. So that's great. Guys, um, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, uh, with bass in mind in June, June the 13th, 2023, will be hitting its third birthday. Um, it was never supposed to exist. I had no intention to do this. I always worked for other people. Um, and now uh, I'm my own boss and I'm loving it. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, we're about to go through a massive renaissance here. New cameras, new big sound wall, and a set is being built here so that I can start doing recorded video information. Um, these eight lessons were just because I wanted to archive them all consistent um, from a very special uh seminal point in with bass in mind's history uh and and give them back to you so you've got them um help yourself to these eight lessons please share them let people know they're here um and then stay tuned for with bass in mind there's going to be a lot of change and um i think you're probably going to be seeing quite a lot of me in the future thanks up guys i'm phil man once again massive thanks to dan mark gooday at ashdown engineering if it wasn't for them i wouldn't have known about nhs fest and if it wasn't for nhs fest there wouldn't have been a with bass in mind. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you next time.